August 23rd, 1964, at 0727 hours. Emergency press report of recent events concerning the Narrow Space Program, spacecraft, and its crew. For four days, the crew of Narrow 8 have been trapped in their spacecraft. Marina Volodina, Elvira Poloshina, and Evgenia Koshakina are expected to run out of their current supplies in 16 days' time. The cause of this devastating turn of events is recalled as follows. On August 10th, 1400 hours, the Narrow 8 refueler successfully launched to low Earth orbit, completing the first phase of its mission. It would be left in a roughly 160 kilometer orbit until Narrow 8 is in a stable low Earth orbit and then rendezvous with it for fuel delivery. Its AJ-10 engine would be able to safely ignite four times, leaving no room for unnecessary maneuvers. Its mission would be to refuel the narrow spacecraft's moon transfer stage, at which point it would deorbit and fall into the atmosphere. Nine days later, on August 19th at 1326 hours, the Narrow 8 lifted off from the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. Its crew of three would plan to be the first Kerbals to land on the surface of the moon. The spacecraft reached low Earth orbit nominally, followed by full engine cutoff of the second stage, 6 minutes and 20 second seconds into the flight. Immediately afterwards, it was discovered the onboard reaction control system was entirely unresponsive, leading the mission to immediately abort due to the imminent emergency. The crew took control of the spacecraft and separated itself from the narrow lander and the moon transfer stage. The separation caused the three vehicles to drift apart, and for several hours the crew reported they could still visually detect the other satellites. The spacecraft's main engine is unable to fire with the unresponsive reaction control system, and no emergency override was installed onto the craft, leaving the crew unable to control attitude or translation. On top of this, an unforeseen engineering problem with the descent module caused its hatch to become obstructed once in orbit leaving the now-stranded crew unable to transfer to the orbital module for extravehicular activity. Therefore, unable to fly the fully capable lander as the two craft drift slowly and helplessly apart from one another. After several more orbits around the Earth, the crew had lost visual detection of both the lander and the transfer stage. Three days later on August 22nd, just yesterday, the Narrow 8 refueler was tasked with a different mission than originally planned and diverted to attempt a rendezvous and docking procedure with Narrow 8 in order to deorbit the spacecraft. However, a miscommunication between the crew and ground control led to the refueler rendezvousing with the drifting Narrow 8 lander instead of the Narrow 8 spacecraft, which now happened to be 83 kilometers retrograde respective of the refueler unnecessarily wasting two of four ignitions of its AJ-10 engine. Its onboard RCS was instead used to correct its trajectory to meet up with the Narrow 8 one orbit around Earth later. Upon reaching the spacecraft, its RCS fuel supply had nearly run dry, and upon attempting to dock, ran out entirely, leaving the crew stranded once again, this time without any viable options left for escape. Per protocol stating, and I quote, it is necessary for communication broadcasts between control and any ongoing mission deemed prone to experience complete and utter disaster, including loss of the spacecraft and its crew by any means, to be silenced in order to protect and respect the crew and their loved ones' privacy. Henceforth, all communication with the crew and all audio files concerning the transpiring situation are highly classified and only available to authorized personnel. We are working around the clock to come up with a solution to the problems Narrow 8 is experiencing, and we fully intend to bring them back alive. We have 16 days to rush build a satellite either capable of deorbiting the spacecraft, providing HTP fuel for the spacecraft's reaction control thrusters as to allow the craft to deorbit itself, or provide supplies to further prolong the crew's life for us to come up with another solution. Should this rescue mission fail, Marina, Elvira, and Evgenia are to be forever commemorated as true heroes of our space program. There is no gain without loss. There is no dream without cost. And as we gaze up at the stars to wonder about our place in the universe, we will never forget their sacrifice as we continue on, long and far into the night. Should luck be on our side, each member will ceremoniously be given promotions of the highest regard upon their safe return to Earth. There will be no questions. Thank you.
Welcome back to Realism Overhaul, guys. Well, a lot has happened in this failed mission. Uh, as, as you now know, I sent up a rocket, the Nero 8, which was a modified design of pretty much all the Nero rockets. It ended up sort of being a mix of Apollo-style uh, lander and orbiter, but in a Soyuz design also mixed with sort of a delta designed first stage it's it's all sort of a mashup i didn't really go for a one specific style i sort of i sort of uh, mashed them all together um but surprisingly the the rocket design got it up into space perfectly fine and i was actually surprised that the first time i launched these rockets um they worked for the most part at least at least that's what i thought because upon reaching orbit with the Nero 8, everything, everything went downhill. And you'll see here, this is the rescue craft right here. And uh, I forgot to put payload fairings on this. Instead, this is interstage fairings. So it kind of clips through. Um, but I made it work. I just uh, made believe I put interstage fairing, or not interstage, payload fairings on. Um, and they separated fine. It just didn't show it. We'll just say that. Anyways, this is the rescue craft putting itself in orbit. Uh, just two engines on this. Uh, this is the AJ-10. Uh, it's the same one as the refueler, except with a lot more Delta V, but it still just has the four ignitions remaining. And I initially planned to use this um, to ullage the Nero 8's main engine. But when I reached the Nero 8, it, the main engine had a, had a fuel feed issue and wouldn't ignite. So I ended up just having to use this small craft uh, to push the Nero 8 back into the atmosphere. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's go back to the problems that I was having with the Nero 8. To start off with, uh, the reaction control thrusters that wouldn't fire. Now what happened there is I had the right fuel for the right thrusters. Uh, the problem being, I put the fuel canister on a, f um, a structural part that had no crossfeed available. And even in the editor, I noticed now after the fact, uh, in orange words, it said no fuel crossfeed. And I had, I must have completely ignored that. <laughs> Um, and because of that, it causes the uh, main engine, uh, the main engine not to fire, because I can't ullage. Uh, but there may have been a different problem with the fuel tank, in hindsight, but I am not sure about that one. The second uh, flaw would be the actual design of the orbiter itself. I went with sort of a Soyuz design, um, which. And all you can see it right here, uh, the part with the docking port would be the orbital module, and the one beneath that is the descent module, and the one beneath that is the service module. And the descent module to the uh, to the orbital module, uh, according to the mod connected living space, I believe, uh, that they're not connected, so I could not transfer any crew. And because I have a fairing over the bottom one, or the descent module, they couldn't EVA out of there. Um, and to be honest, I have never really looked at uh, the mod connected living spaces before, and I need to figure out how to get these things to connect and actually have the crew use them. Because I couldn't get them into the orbital module, and so they couldn't EVA. Because what I had initially planned to do was EVA, grab the lander, and attach it to uh, the, the orbiter so that I could uh, deorbit right away after I realized everything that happened. Um, but I was not able to do that and they just had to drift apart. And so I decided to try to repurpose the refueler. And the reason there was a refueler on this mission, I initially planned on not having a refueler, it would have just been one rocket. But the thing is, the thing was too dang heavy and so I needed to bring up one of the fuel tanks completely empty and then have the second rocket available 
to refuel that one. And just to have the amount of delta V uh, and the amount of thrust to get into orbit. Uh, here I had an issue. Um, I tried to spin stabilize in the re-entry and well it's real wobbly and right here I was starting to panic a little bit uh, because that fairing just blew off. <laughs> I planned on decoupling it later in the in the uh, re-entry but unfortunately I mean fortunately uh, they survived that incident and eventually the air actually made the spin stabilization do what it was initially supposed to do but up in the thin atmosphere it was it was a real risky situation so yeah after i believe 12 days 13 days it says on the top there 13 and a half days in space the crew of Nero 8 made it home safely to Earth. Thank you so much for watching, and peace out.